walk me through focus thought for 17 seconds and give an example of what that would be step by step? Yeah, what subject? The subject of manifesting a lot of money. <laughs> All right, now there's some things to take into consideration because there are a lot of clogged pipes on that subject. So there already is quite a bit of momentum on that subject. So if we approach it in any normal way, we're just going to add to the clogged pipe. You see what we're getting at? So here's a law based fact that if you can hear it, it will serve you in every conversation that you have with yourself in your deliberate creation forevermore. The more general you are, when you approach a topic where you know you have clogged pipes, the better off you'll be. Now think about what that means. If you don't have any clogged pipes, if you're thinking about something wanted, then the more specific you are, the faster the momentum and the better it is because you're carving out a path of least resistance to something. But when you're thinking about something unwanted and adding to what you do not want, then the less specific you are, the better off you'll be. Does that make sense to you? What's the goal here? to find the first pure thought about abundance, a pure thought about abundance. So just reach for a pure thought about abundance, which means try not to have it have any relationship to you. If you're not feeling abundant, then be good to leave you out of the equation for just a little bit. So let's just talk purely about the idea of abundance. Abundance, the idea of abundance makes me feel free. All right. I would like the idea of abundance to make me feel free. Now you don't feel free with the idea of abundance yet. So you just said something you don't mean. And this is something now, friends, we said, we're going to really be fine tuning here. So hear this statement. When you say something you don't mean law of attraction, here's what you do mean. Ooh. <laughs> so you poked at it with a stick and didn't get the results that you wanted. See what we're getting at. So let's rather than talking about abundance and money, Let's talk about abundance, abundance of clarity, abundance of sunshine, abundance of ocean. Are those easier for you to feel abundance about? Definitely. All right. So with the idea of fewer clogged pipes and just more free flowing thought, give us some statements about that kind of abundance. The sun beating down on me makes me feel energetic, inspired. Lots of sun abundance, isn't there? Mm. I never wake up and wonder, well, wait. <laughs> Esther couldn't find the ocean for three days last week so that statement was not exactly accurate whether I can see the Sun or not I know it's out there whether I can see it clearly or not I know it's there that statement feels pretty good doesn't it I know it's there I really never worry about the Sun not being there there are aspects of well-being and abundance that I just take for granted my belief is never challenged about it I just know that there is abundance around me yeah. So what other kind of abundance comes easily to you? Abundance, abundance of music comes very easy. Talk to us about that a little bit. Generally. I hear music throughout my day. Yeah. Stay in that feeling for a little bit and become more specific if you want to. Mm. Since there's no resistance on that topic, then as you become more specific, you carve out a greater path of less resistance. So carve that out a little bit. Songs just come to me and it's, I don't know where they come from, but they come and it sounds good. And, and to, I'm open to receiving these musical messages. I, don't, I have no idea where they come from. but So I accept that from the unseen, abundance flows to me in this form. And so it is logical to me that from the unseen, that all nature of abundance will flow to me. And that in the same way that I can be in a vibrational place of just allowing that to happen, I can be in a vibrational place of allowing more abundance on more subjects to happen. Feel how free flowing that is. Now there was no resistance. Those statements were easy to make and felt good as you make them. Now that may be all the work that you need to do for one conversation that you're having with yourself. And you can tell that you've done good work because you have contemplated a subject and you felt good while you contemplated it. Mm. So we're going to make a statement to you, a really to all of you. This is another refined point, very fine tuning, deliberate creators that we are visiting with here today. So how do you feel about the concept of in order to get the results that you want, if you've got some clogged pipes, just never mind them, lay some new pipes. Doesn't that make perfect sense to you? 
isn't that an easy to understand concept so now we just want to insert this very important understanding when you're standing in the middle of clogged pipes and you know you are because you feel uncomfortable that's not the time to try to lay new pipes because all you do is increase the clogging of the pipes that already exist so here's a statement that we want you to remember we want you to somehow some way and we'll talk more about that as we're moving forward somehow some way get on this high flying disc it usually happens first thing in the morning before things have come to thwart it sometimes you don't make it to breakfast but first thing in the morning is when you're most likely to feel it and the more you reach for it the more you care about it the more you milk it when you are there the more you will own it the easier it will be the more the momentum will be there the more often you'll be there the easier it'll be to be there so let's say you're there and it doesn't matter if you even know how you got there yesterday I was talking to a friend on the telephone the other day and they got on the subject and they were laughing so hard they were laughing so hard that neither one of them could understand what the other one was saying <laughs> what I can't understand you what I can't understand you and so Esther has decided that she never needs to meditate again she'll just remember that conversation and she goes right to that high-flying disc in other words when you get hold of something that feels like that just milk it and 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 use it for your reason for feeling the way that you're feeling so here's the statement we've been teasing you about it it's time to deliver it to you do all of your laying of new pipes from your high-flying disc all of them from your high-flying disc so the other day after laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing with this friend Esther replayed that conversation over and 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 over in her mind all day long we'll tell you what they were laughing about we warn you you kind of had to be there <laughs> so they're talking about the same thing that you're asking about they're reaching for high-flying thoughts and Esther is saying I've discovered that the more general I am the easier it is to stay there and so she was saying I love words like clarity and I love the feeling of invincibility and and I've got this pen that I pretend is my magic wand and I'm just waving it around and it feels like the entire universe is responding to what I'm asking for and all I want to do is think about these things and talk about these things Esther said I'm afraid I'm becoming like a vibrational snob <laughs> because I'm not willing to go to other less good feeling places and her friend said yeah it's like others can't quite understand us she said it's like being in that room at the insane asylum <laughs> <laughs> Esther worked at the state hospital in Blackfoot Idaho she knows that room She's seen that room so Esther began laughing and then one or the other of them is talking about people walking by and and hearing them laughing in there and saying just leave them alone <laughs> and don't get too close to the door and then Esther said yeah and they'll, they'll slip food under the door to us and her friend said yeah and we'll think we manifested it <laughs> so on and on and on and on you've never heard two people snort <laughs> more so finding something like that finding something like that finding something like that and milking it just for the fun of it milking it just for the clarity of it causes you to practice that high-flying vibration and gain momentum of that high-flying vibration and make it more likely that that is the high-flying vibration that you own make it easier to be there so after after that Esther went to bed that night playing that over and over and over in her mind she had a long conversation with her daughter Tracy who was waiting to pick someone up at the airport telling her the story and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing what fun it is to have conversations with those who like you don't mind being locked in that crazy room <laughs> where you are not facing reality where your undivided attention is upon whatever subject it is that makes you feel like that so Esther went to sleep in that vibration and when she awakened in the morning such an interesting thing happened because her first thought now she's been listening to us for a long time talking about how when you prepay when you go to bed thinking about good things and you'll wake up thinking about good things and Esther woke up and the first thought that was in her mind was maybe the most troubling thought that she's experienced in the last several years that was the thought that was in her mind but she was so consciously aware of all of these concepts that we've been talking about that she said to herself right out loud I've got 16 seconds to shake this thought 16 seconds to return to my high-flying disc 
16 seconds to lay my new pipes about this subject and then energy just flooded all through her as she realized that this was her high-flying disc this was her chance to take a subject that had been troubling and approach it from her high-flying disc and she left it in a place never to return to again you see what we're getting at this is the way that you find clarity this is the way you find abundance you wait until you're in that feeling of high-flying abundance and then you can approach the subject that's a little more troubling if you want to understanding that it's risky but it's only 16 seconds of risky right you've got 16 seconds you've got 16 seconds to let it go or to bring it into alignment our favorite story that fits right here we've got to tell it to you now because it means everything sometimes it's like you say to us Abraham I've jumped out of an airplane and I have no parachute what do you suggest that I now do and we say hang on it'll be over in a little while <laughs> because there is a momentum that is happening that there is not any action that you're going to be able to offer that's going to make any difference you understand that so what we're saying to you is don't struggle don't fret don't effort just crash and burn it's all right because tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc Tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc. Tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc. Tomorrow you can get up and get on the high flying disc. And after a few days of tomorrow getting up and getting on the high flying disc, one day Esther said to us, Abraham, I refuse to accept that I have to wait until tomorrow to get on the high flying disc. I have tools that you've given me. I can get back up there anytime that I choose to get back up there. So what are we talking about? We're talking about your conscious awareness of your vibrational output. Yes. We're talking about your conscious awareness that you are vibrational beings. Yes. We're talking about your awareness that you can choose the vibration of your being in this moment, but that it takes a little practice. Yes. And some subjects have enough momentum going that it's going to take getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow. This could take a while getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow and getting up tomorrow. <laughs> but if you get up on enough tomorrows and you reach for that high flying disc and find it, then what happens next will be vivid evidence of how you're doing with your high flying disc. We so want you to understand that in this day, evidence of what disc you're on is going to be all around you. Esther said the other day, the people around me are making me believe that I might be on the Henri disc. <laughs> she resented them, <laughs> but she had to accept she had rendezvoused there with them. You pick the disc and you'll rendezvous with others who have picked the disc, you see. And sometimes if you don't realize that you're on it till you're on it, there's enough momentum going that it's hard to get off of it. But that's the work. So here's the rule of thumb that we would follow if we were standing in your physical shoes. The better we feel, the more we would milk it. The worse we feel, the more we would try to ignore it. That's what Jesus meant when he said, turn the other cheek. Choose your vibration and give it your undivided attention if it feels good. And give it as little attention as you can if it doesn't feel good. So Esther's thinking the other day about the words that we used and she could feel the poignancy with which we were talking about those clogged pipes in her pond and how they were clogged from neglect and Esther got this visual image of pipes that she's laid to all kinds of things wanted and unwanted and she's got open pipes to unwanted things and open pipes to wanted things and what keeps them open attention to them attention to them keeps them open She's keeping the path of least resistance open to wanted and unwanted things, yes? But if she neglects them, they just clog up from neglect. So it's a new, even better application of this clogged pipe analogy. What paths of least resistance are you carving open every day? I hate that guy. I've always hated that guy. That guy is such a pain. The guy dogs me. I think he stalks me. He's everywhere I go. I don't like that guy. That person at work is everywhere I go, always in my face. Who's keeping the pipes open? That's what we want to ask you. You are. You're always the one who's keeping the pipes open. So if you look around any environment, whether it's the environment of your memory, whether it's the environment of your work, whether it's the environment of your family, whether it's the environment of the people that you are moving through the freeways with, whatever environment that you're moving around in, you are the one who's keeping the pathways open. You're the one that gets to decide. So be more specific if it's a pathway you want open and be more general if it's one that you would like to just sort of stop. The more general you are, the less momentum there will be. Helpful? Yeah. Really good. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yeah.